Hey there guys, this is me and Malorian, and in this video we're going to be answering a question from one of you. Now, I put up a post on my Mr. Malorian Facebook page asking if there was anything you wanted me to cover, and you guys have lots of topics for me, so luckily I can be doing a lot of these for a while before I have to ask again, but let's get to number one. Now the first question here came from Johnny D. Richards and what Johnny asks is how this went from a fun tabletop miniatures game to advanced geometry and mathematics exam. Now there, there's clearly a little bit of salt in there if not a lot of bit of salt but I think this is a very important question to cover and I'm not really sure whether this is stemming from the whole you know spray template 0 .03 difference or whether it has to do with all the precision measurement sticks and stuff like that but luckily the answer all comes from the same spot so we're gonna be talking about that I'm also gonna be talking about how you can fix this but before I get there I want to start with some things from the beginning <clears throat> and the first thing I want to talk about is just the idea that all of us are different and all of us are playing this game for different reasons. Some of us are coming into this because they like to model and paint. Some of us just like to play with werewolves fighting robots. Some of us like playing it for the competitive aspect. Some of us have like different and multiple layered reasons. And then of course we're not going to be the same forever. Our preferences will change over time. So. You can't really take one paintbrush and say all oh, War Machine players just do this. This is still full of tons of different people. All your friends and, and people that play anything else are also playing this. So I always like starting there just to make sure that we're not painting all of the whole system with a singular brush. That being said, I think it's also important to know that these things really changed at one moment. There was one moment in War Machine's history where it really did have a shift in the way that it was normally played. And what that really came from was the difference from Mark II to Mark III and one important rule that Privateer Press changed. Now what that was was pre-measuring. Now for some of you who might be newer to the game or maybe just forgot, you know, we've been doing this for so long now that maybe you totally forgot that there's a time that you could not pre-measure. And uh, wow, that was a completely different world. Now, to be fair, a lot of other games are exactly the same. You can't pre-measure. I remember playing games where, you know, I'm playing 40K and I have my big artillery piece and I basically have to guess how far something is away, put down my scatter template, and then it's going to be scattering from there. So I need to be dead on. And back in those days, like my brother and I and the people in our gaming group, whew, like stuff like four feet away, we would be getting like within an inch. We were getting so good at trying to pre precision this and trying to decide whether it's in or not. And the same thing was happening in War Machine. And what that really did was took out a lot of the certainty from the game. You didn't know exactly how close something was. You had to eye it. You had to guess. And this had multiple different things to it. First of all, there could be no precision sticks, right? You did not know how close you were to something else. So when you're setting up your things, you had to either be probably a little bit more aggressive because you're like, screw it these guys will be in anyway, or a little bit more cautious, being like, I don't know where this is, so I'm going to add some extra room just in case. Now, in one case, you can say, or on one hand rather, that this really then made things a lot more you know, soft and free and easy because there was all this seriousness about like, you know, 0 .03 of an inch type thing, that would not be part of the game. You just, there's no robots out there that could see it that accurately. At the same time though, I think it's fair to realize that there was also a fair amount of frustration. Just the, if you can think how critical it is when somebody, you know, is able to clear up a lane or he didn't know that they had a plus two inch threat extender and all of a sudden their heavy takes out your heavy and you're like, oh, you know, like I just didn't think that they could do these rules and get to there. Well, just imagine the frustration where you set things up you charge them and it turns out that you're like a millimeter out. And all of a sudden now, it's a 
failed charge. You know, that's a big thing I find that's funny with new players is they look in these things and they see like, oh, well, failed charges. That must be a thing where like with your caster, where you cast your spells and you're charging something across the board just because that's how you get a little bit further. It's like, well, no, we used to actually have failed charges where you just eyed that distance incorrectly, you declared the charge, and now, oh, guess what? You're not in range. Or it's not even just with charges, it'd be things with like spells and, and shooting your guns. You know, right now, if Sloan's trying to shoot you, you can lay down that 14 inch stick and know exactly where you need to place everything. Back then, you would just have to kind of guess and be like, I think this is 14 inches. And I mean, if, if you threat 14 with your gun and they threat 13 with their charge, <laughs> you better be careful because if you go a little bit too far out, you don't get to shoot. If you go a little bit too close, now that you've measured at that point to see whether you're in range after you declare the shot, well now your opponent will know whether they can charge you back. So yeah, that was an interesting time for sure. And you just think like trying to cast a spell, right? A lot of times now, <clears throat> You could go and you could be putting down your, your six inch stick to see whether your caster can be casting these friendly spells. And, uh, you know, if you deployed wrong and all of a sudden now they're out of that range, sorry, you kind of miss. Now, there was a few things you could do back then to try and mitigate these things. Uh, for one, your caster could always measure out their control area. So that didn't give you all the measurements, but at least from one point, you could measure everything in a sweep. And of course, players who wanted to try and get a little bit more accurate would use a few more tricks like that to start realizing what these threats are. Like another good example is that people would really start focusing in on the zones and start focusing on like, okay, so what is the geometry of this zone? And so if I'm here, that means I'll be in range of that. How far apart are these zones in this scenario? So I always know that measurement. Oh, what's another thing I can measure? Oh, I can measure my command of a unit. Okay, again, now it's just another not a singular point from your caster, there's other ones. And so you can start using those to better gauge the board and know where things are. Or you'd also almost be like counting cards in casino, where it's like, okay, I'm moving up this eight inches, so now we're this far apart. You moved up this many inches, we used to be about this foot apart. And you know, like you'd have to do this math in your head. Now, of course, there's nothing forcing you to do this math. You can always just Play it as easy as you want, but clearly the more information you have, the better the judgment you can make for making the, the best optimal plays. So all of a sudden now, when we went to Mark III, and now you can pre-measure everything, well now basically everybody is that laser-guided robot. Everybody can know every single distance all the time. And now that's why you're seeing these precision measurement sticks. That's why all of a sudden we're having these arguments about 0.03 inches on a template because those things didn't matter before. They only matter now where you are actually playing the game to that level of precision. Now, I, I think one of the, I want to cover two things here uh, next. The first thing I want to be covering is, is this actually bad? Well, Bad is a very loose term, but I think one of the things you have to realize is that for the people that are playing this game to be the most competitive, this is a good thing. It's interesting, when I'm, when I'm having my, my brothers and stuff over for board games, I have one brother that absolutely hates anything that's interactive with like a team. You know, he is competitive, he wants the fact whether he's going to win or not to be based solely on his own decisions and doesn't want to have any of these co-op type games. And that's fine, you know, people are playing board games for different reasons, just like why they're playing War Machine for different reasons. And so the fact that the people who want to play the game to be as competitive as possible, they want to test their skill, blah, 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 that's fine. Uh, one thing we definitely saw, though, is that as soon as this became readily available, more people were drawn to that aspect of the game. So, of course, people that are looking to play a game because they can test out their skill are going to congregate towards that, just like how my brother goes towards those games for him, those board games, those ones he wants to play. So not only did you see more people probably shift to War Machine that are looking for that because now it's available, but also players who maybe enjoy 
an array of things. Now they're like, oh, I can actually scratch this itch a little bit better from War Machine. And now all of a sudden, everybody is having precision measurement sticks all over the place, and everyone's carefully putting these things down. Now, the second thing I want to cover is, well, okay, there is one rule that made this large change where all of a sudden math and geometry was a lot more important. It was there before, like I said, people were trying to do calculations based on what measurements they could take, but is Privateer Press going to go back on this? And I would, I mean, of course, I don't work for them, I can't say 100%, but I would bet a large amount of money they're not going to go back now. They're not going to go back because, first of all, it would invalidate people's purchases. So all these little sticks that people have bought, they will now not be able to use them. They'll be upset. And Privateer Press have kind of learned some of these things where it doesn't really help their bottom line to be pissing off large amounts of players. Secondly, the big thing that kind of changes these things is just the fact that they don't want to be invalidating companies. There's companies out there now that what they do is, especially with the 3D printers and stuff like that, is they make these precision sticks. And even though, you know, these are basically rival companies and what does Privateer Press care, well, come on guys, we're all people, we're all friends, and the same people that are going and chatting to Privateer uh, Press at these events are a lot of the same people that make these tools. And they're not going to go and shoot their buddy in the knee and being like, ha ha ha, now all those sticks are useless. You know, they're like, no, this is part of the game, this is where we are, there's people embracing and loving them, we're not going to take this away. So. Where do we go from here? I told you at the start of the video, I was going to tell you how you can fix this math problem in War Machine. So let's get to that solution. And I think the first part of this solution, I'm just realizing now that a lot of my things come to you in twos. I don't know why. But the first part of this solution is that you don't need a solution. If you're a person who is loving the game because of the modeling and the painting, people using precision measurement sticks do not affect you. You can just still enjoy painting and modeling. If you're a person that enjoys this game because you love the fact that you have ninjas on reindeers that are charging into trolls and huge colossal robots, you can still do that and you can still enjoy that fun part of the game and the, th the theme behind it and what's going on. So really probably the only... there's. Again, two. I don't know why this is coming up. There's two reasons why people usually take, you know, insults to this shift in the culture where there's more people looking to be more competitive. The first one being that the people who are really in themselves competitive as well, the fact that they're losing really bothers them. So, you know, I, sometimes it's something you might want to look in yourself and if the fact that you're getting angry is because you're losing to competitive players, it might just be that you're competitive as well. <laughs> and the second thing is though, is that I think it really comes down to the, the, the community for them too, right? So these people that might have more enjoyed going to the forums and being like, hey, let's talk about painting, or hey, let's go talk about how awesome these models are, are now being drowned out by the influx of people who want to be talking about this high competitive nature and all the things you can do. But luckily, there are places for you. There are so many Facebook groups out there that are dedicated to painting, that are dedicated to modeling. I don't know if there's really ones out there that are really dedicated to just like the awesomeness of War Machine and enjoying the theme of it, but you can find these, you can make these, you can be the leader of your own change. If you're wanting to change the conversation, change the conversation. So. Again, going back to my previous two, I was saying there's a second thing you could always try doing as well. And what that really is, is if we know this is the one rule that really changed this, why don't you personally try changing that rule? This game and this rule book is not enforced by police. There is nobody watching you, nobody forcing things down your throat. If you want to try running a Signar Force with a Kador caster, go ahead. As long as your gaming group is cool with it, hey, great. Maybe make a challenge and say like, hey guys, just to try something out, let's try playing back with like the Mark Tool rules where you can't pre-measure. And 
you know, let's just see what happens. And it might be something that at first is like, ah, well, we'll see, it's kind of weird and janky, but who knows? Maybe your gaming group will actually enjoy that. Maybe you can just run a tournament where the twist on the tournament is that there's no pre-measuring. You, when you come to this, uh, this tournament, leave your precision sticks at home because you're going to now have to test that eye and try and guess when you're putting things down how far they are. And until you actually declare an attack or something like that, you cannot measure and there'll be this level of uncertainty. Hell, up the, the ante even more, making it a drinking event as well, and really take the pressure off. You know, again, these things are in your hands, and if you know that this is the one thing that led to math being a real overlying factor in the game, well, then change that and try it out. You know, you can even try trying it out for yourself first, you know? That if you're a person that is, again, loving that more silly part of the game more than the, the serious, well, you know what? You might actually enjoy just putting this rule on yourself, going to a tournament and being like, you know what? I'm gonna try going through this whole one, this entire tournament, not pre-measuring, and we're just gonna see how this goes. And you might enjoy the focus of that and just how those games go and wondering whether you're in or not enough to kind of counteract the fact that you're bothered that your opponent is having these precision measurement sticks. So I'm hoping this answers all the questions I answered where it came from, whether it's actually good or bad, and what you can do about it. And at the end of the day, all I want is everybody to enjoy this game. I, I started off telling you about how there's lots of different people enjoying this game for lots of different reasons, and far be for me to say that certain people's wants or needs are more important than somebody else's. So. Clearly, right now, the game is set up so that people who want to be very competitive in the game and really have it to be a game that tests their skill are getting exactly what they want. But if you're not getting exactly what you want from it, either be the champion of your own change and push forward the suggestions I brought to you, or, you know, I never want to suggest people to go to other games, but I, the only thing I'd risk there is that if you do go to another game, just realize that that same spread of people will be in any game you find out there so whatever it takes find a way to make yourself happy but that's it so there you go there's the answer to the first question like i mentioned i got tons more to go through so expect a lot more of these all right we'll talk to you later bye